Hi friends and welcome back to the Cyber Haggis, more mutton now than man. In this video I'll be showing you how I made this terrain piece, so remember to like and subscribe for more. I've built this piece to fit with the rest of the scenery I've made for my Bloodmoor setting, a dark fantasy game. Bloodmoor's a dying world created from the ashes of elemental lands, swallowed and then spat from the realm of entropy, a twisted and cursed shadow of what it once was. A bleak land of swamps and moorlands, inhabited by deadly creatures and broken peoples. But remains of human civilization lie huddled in hamlets and villages, while cannibal moots howl at the walls, and death cults try to bring a swift end to a world they rightly believe is doomed. This is the land of Bloodmoor, and this is the scenery that I will be adding to in this video. For this piece, I've got a wide variety of just cheap skeleton parts and bones and things that I got from eBay and from Amazon. These were just some cheap skeleton parts of build your own dinosaur thing and which was quite frankly rubbish. Um, so I'm going to chop a load of these bits apart. I'm going to glue them onto a base and we're going to make a sort of bone yard out of the whole thing. I'm going to select some of these pieces which I think are particularly nice. Um, that's a good looking one. For example, uh, let me see a couple of big ones with bones and femurs. Obviously there are connection points and things. I'm going to need to block them off, cut them up a bit. I'm going to stick them onto a CD. That's a good um, base, good size for 28 millimeter. I'm going to cover the CD in just some filler, glue these all pieces in and then paint it. And I'm going to take you through that whole process. So sit back and enjoy. First thing I need to do, obviously the CD's got a big hole right in the middle there. I'm just going to cover that up with a bit of tape. Like so. Doesn't have to be neat. Then I'm going to stick a bunch of the filler on top. And it's the good part. You can get messy with this. I'm just going to glob straight into there and I'm just going to splat it straight on the top of it. Because this will be the ground, the substrate underneath the bones. And normally what I would do with this is let it dry before I do anything with it. But in this case, because I want the bones to be sort of buried in it, stuck in it, I'm going to put a thick layer on and I'm not going to let it dry. I'm going to leave it wet so the bones can be properly dug into it. Right, I've washed my hands now. But they're probably going to get dirty again in a second when I start pressing all these bits in. So I've selected some bits and pieces. Like I say, there's all these connectors and things. So I've got the old trusty tools. I'm going to snip some of these bits. A bit harder plastic than I was expecting there. Snip that off. Again, these are going to be all damaged bones and things. It doesn't really matter of a mess in them and to be frank with you they were cheap and cheerful so Yeah, we're going to need to cover some more of this up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep jabbing at that and I'm going to put some more filler in and I'll get back to you momentarily. 
Okay, I've added some more bits and I've put in some more of the filler. Absolutely covered myself again. As you can see, some of the pieces I've just almost completely buried. I've tried to cover the uh, slots and holes where I can. I've just noticed a bit that I've missed there. Look, let's cover that up. And again, it doesn't matter that it's messy and horrible because it's meant to be. It's a boneyard. Next, I'm going to leave this to dry for at least 24 hours, maybe even 48. Then I'm going to undercoat it with black, probably, and start painting. I'll see you shortly. Kind of a little experiment here, just coming at you from a different angle. I have spray painted it black. I have also painted the base brown. Now, most of that's going to get covered by the substrate anyway. I wasn't particularly neat when I was putting it on because the bones need to look like they were buried and I'm about to paint them anyway. I used a cheap paint I got from a hobby shop. I think it was about a quid for 100 mils. You don't want to be using your expensive uh, miniature paints when you're just trying to get some ground coverage, as it were. Next, I am going to paint the bone. I'm going to use similar technique that I did for the bone golem in one of my previous videos. So I'm going to use some of this army painter skeleton bone and I'm going to use this raw umber medium that I got again cheap from somewhere. I think this was 50 pence and it's done me really well. First things first, give this a good shake because the army painter stuff I think separates a lot more than the Vallejo but I found this is quite a nice colour I like this one I'll stick a blob on my wet palette that's probably not enough considering how much coverage I've got to get done now I'm not overly worried that I'm using this dirty brown water now because it's bone, it's meant to be dirty and old and horrible. So I'm just gonna whack it on. Now this was a really weird plastic I found when I was cutting it. And it looks like the paint's kind of gone on a bit weird as well. It looks like I'm gonna need a couple of coats of this. Yeah, it's, it's doing that sort of thin coating you get on plastic sometimes, but that's fine. That's fine. And again, I'm just being rough and ready here. It doesn't really matter what it looks like at this point. As long as it looks good for the end product. And as I keep saying, I approach this more from an arty point of view than a technical point of view so I'm just using this old brush again because I'm just going to slop this around I just noticed that some of this brown isn't particularly dry but don't really care right so I have just swacked that on there and as you can see the so sort of rubbish plastic is made of it's made of it a bit streaky. I will continue on with that and then once that's complete we'll move on to the next stage. I've painted all the bone in. I haven't been particularly neat, don't really need to at this stage. Next up I'm going to use the raw umber to give it some Shade, make it look a bit darker. Give it that sort of stained bone colour. Um, I find this stuff is really nice. I talked to it about it before. It's 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 thicker than a normal paint. Um, really is more like one of the GW contrast paints. And 
you need to get the sort of right consistency. You need still need to be a little bit thicker than normal paint when you're putting it on. You don't want it to be completely watered down, but at the same time, I try not to put it on um, at the consistency it starts out as because it is very thick stuff. And that seems to be the sort of colour I'm going for. And, and the, the beauty of this stuff is that it lets some of the colour actually show through. So you get that bone look. So I'm going to continue doing this until I've got it all done. Doesn't look particularly appetising at the moment. But it is a boneyard. <laughs> so I will continue doing that and then come back once it's covered. I've finished covering it with the raw umber. So as you can see, that gives it a sort of aged look. And I guess you could stop there if you wanted, but I'm going to add a couple of highlights. I'm not going to go too far i'm not going to go as far as i did with the um bone golem for example i'm just going to mix a little bit of the skeleton bone with the raw umber Try and get vaguely the same sort of colour that's already on here. That's a little brighter than it needs to be. So I'll add a little bit more of the raw amber. Uh, I'm just going to pick out some of the bits. I'm not. I'm not going to go. Yeah, I'm not happy with that colour. Let's add a little bit more of the skeleton bow and see what happens. What I think I actually need to do is add a little bit of water, make it a bit more see-through. That's better. You just want to sort of pick out some of the raised areas. You don't want to go too far, perfectly honest with you, because it already looks quite good as it stands so you want a lot of these sort of patchy bits to come through you don't want to cover them up and lose the texture of the the um the umbers given it but at the same time you still want to bring out some of the raised areas the ribs and things you just work around some of the texture. And it doesn't need to be neat strokes. It just needs to bring out the raised areas. And I've really watered that down quite a lot. So it's letting these darker patchy bits show through while at the same time giving it a bit of a highlight. But you need, don't need to go overboard with that sort of thing. If you can see that I've just picked out a bit so you can see that it's lighter than say these bits here. And I'm going to do that on the rest of it. And then I might uh, do a second highlight, just bring it out a bit more. But I quite like the effect that some of the, the way the uh, raw ember has dried. Because it's given a really sort of pitted look. 
And that's because I just threw it on. I, I, I made no real attempt to make sure it was only going into recessed areas. I made no real attempt to make sure it was sort of homogenous. I just whacked it on any old how roughly with the brush. And it's given me an effect that I'm quite happy with, I've got to say. So I'm not don't want to ruin that by going over it too much. But at the same time, you do need to pick out some of the raised areas. Just to give it more raised effect and give it just that little bit extra bit of texture. And as I've said before, don't be afraid to get your hands in and dab at it if you think you put on too much or you feel you need to move the paint around. I might stipple some of it as well. So what I'm doing there is just using the very point of the brush. And I'm trying to stipple it around. Just, just use the very point. Get in amongst some of that. Areas that the uh, raw umbers dried into. Give it a different kind of texture. Do that on these ribs here as well. Because these are meant to be ancient bones that have been unearthed after millennia or millions of years. They're not going to look pretty. They're not going to look edge highlighted like say a space marine's armor you want these to look like they have been buried so i'm going to leave you here while i go and do the rest of this and i will come back once that is complete I finished highlighting it now, so I did a bit more stippling, I did some striation, I also did some dry brushing, mostly of the ribs and things here to make it sort of gradually lighter towards the top. Just took me five minutes. Looks okay, that's pretty much what I was going for. Doesn't have to be fancy. Next, very much like the blood golem, I am going to add some sort of gory effects to it so I've got some more of my red tone and I'm going to use a bit of red ink and then finally glistening blood I'm going to use the red tone first now, as I said before you shouldn't really add this to your wet palette because it'll just seep into it and go everywhere You might have noticed that all through this I've been using sort of scrappy older uh, paint brushes. Don't need to really use anything fancy for this sort of work. And I'm just going to add it the red tone where I think it'll look good. So I'm going to do something in between the ribs here. Um, this one dries nice and quickly. So by the time I've come round to the next to give it a second coat, you, you might want to give it a second coat, make it, make it a bit darker. Um, the first lot will be dry, which is quite good. And I don't necessarily want to put this absolutely everywhere, but I want to make it look like this is more than just dead bones. This is a horrible place for the animals and creatures and monsters and whatever makes up this 
pile of bones did not die well. You can be as sloppy as you want with this again. You might have noticed that a lot of my work involves just smashing stuff about and not taking much particular care. I'd like to say that's because I take a lot of thought about my process and that's what I'm going for. But mostly it's because I lack patience. So let's get a bit more about these ribs and things. And that first lot over here is dry in places. And this red tone will just give you a sort of very subtle, hopefully, um, areas of red, which then you can go back to um, and highlight up with the red ink and the glistening blood. Uh, don't want to go too far with this because I want to at least make it look slightly. I don't want to be slightly realistic, as realistic as a boneyard of monsters can be. But I also want it to look quite gory. But not so much that it looks absolutely ridiculous. Hopefully you can see around the bottom there, just along here where I've put it on, already looking quite good, quite nicely stained. And then next I will put on a bit of the red ink, I think I might put a little bit more red tone around about here, around about the bottom, where it's more sort of sunk into the, sunk into the ground, where like scavengers couldn't get to it. And that looks quite good. Yeah, I think we'll stop there. We don't want to go too much overboard at this stage. I'll go and I will let that dry and come back. That's dry now. So as you can see, it's given us sort of subtle red stain to it. Next, I'll use a bit of the red ink to bring out the color a little bit more. So, I don't want to go necessarily too overboard at this stage. I think you really just want to put it around again with the sort of bottom or scavengers and things when we all get to it. And you can afford to be a little slapdash here because obviously I mean, it's it's meant to be gore. It's not going to be um, particularly even. Um, so just put it in wherever you think looks best and if you accidentally get some on the outer areas or areas you weren't trying to get into just give it a bit quick dab Coming out quite good, it's bringing out the colour quite well. As I said previously, this is going to be part of my Bloodmore game, so that's why it's so bloody and a little bit horrific. 
because it is a horror fantasy game. Dark fantasy, however you want to call it. And much like the other items I've been doing, it's all going to be swampy and moor-like once I've completed the basing. So I think that will do for the red ink. It's really though the red ink is just to bring out some more of the colour and give some colour differentiation so it's not all just the same tone. Yeah, I think we'll leave it there. Don't want to go too overboard. So as you can see, it's just brought out a bit more of the colour of the red tone and given some colour differentiation. Next, I'm going to use a bit of the glistening blood, and it's basically the same procedure. But this gives it a slightly different texture, I feel. I don't want to use too much of it as well. Well, that needs a bit more of a shake. It's separated. It's better. So yeah, so this stuff's a bit thicker. It's a different colour again. So it'll just give slightly different colour variation. Put that in the wrong slot. It's not as bright as the red ink, but it's brighter than the red tone. Like I say, it's just a slightly different texture. I like putting it on last, just simply because it's just, it's just because it's that bit thicker. Again, you just need to put this on wherever you feel be useful. It gives a more like a sort of gory, gobbity look, I think. It's way too much, but that's quite good. That's sort of seeped into the surrounding earth, which I think it was actually missing a bit. In some of the areas so I think yeah I think place some of that in the earth and soil around the around the bones I guess some of it will be covered up probably quite a lot of it but if you spot a bit that you would particularly like you can leave it uncovered I think this bit up here looks quite good um, I might leave that uncovered once I get to the stage of adding on the substrate yeah, that's that needs a little bit up around its this neck part here I think that yeah that looks fine so that is the majority of it done so what I need to do now is add in the substrate, which I have previously used on the Bone Golem and Harpy videos that I did. So this is some pre-prepared I've got here. So it is some pet substrate for lizards and invertebrates and I've just added in some black paint to that give it a bit of a mix but I haven't 
completely made it black. I've allowed some of the natural colors to come through and it's, it's there's quite a few textures and things in there so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to put a bit of glue a pva on here and then glue that down then after that i'm going to add in some static grass and some other yeah the grass stick on doodads whose name escape me escapes me at the moment um and some water effect and then that is pretty much done so i'm going to stick on the pva now i'm going to put this on and come back to the next stage i've let the grass dry um i haven't completely covered it as i said i want to retain that sort of moorland marshy swamp look so sparse vegetation is the way to go. Next up, I'm going to add some water effect, some still water, Vallejo still water I've got there, but I guess you could use whatever you want. If you go even if it's just like gloss varnish or something. Uh, sometimes I would put this into a palette, but in this case, I've got quite a lot of ground to cover, so I'm just gonna put some straight on. Now, you can see it just sort of sits on the surface there, but, if you give it poke around with an old brush it will soak in to the substrate give it a nice moist look and i don't want to put this everywhere on the on the piece of scenery you still want some drier sort of patches and once this is done, that is the model complete. After this, what I sometimes do is put a layer of matte varnish over the top of it, but it doesn't really matter for these types of terrain pieces, I don't think. I will finish off doing that. And then show you the final piece once it is complete. And here's the final piece, ready to be added to the Bloodmore collection. All told, this piece probably cost me about a pound to make, because that entire box of bones I got cost me less than a tenner, and then all the other pieces are I just buy in bulk. Let me know in the comments below what you think of the piece, what you think I could have improved on it, or any parts of it you particularly enjoyed me making. Let me know also what projects you're working on. I look forward to seeing them. Remember to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell button to get more Cyber Haggis painting and modelling action. I'll see you again soon.